Hi, my name is Nick Tomaszewski. I'm the Product Development Manager here at TRAC, and today I'm here to talk to you about the all-new TRAC alias. Before we get into the engineering and before we get into the layouts of the bowling ball, I want to give you guys the first look of the TRAC alias. Our strategy is to provide you with maximum performance and versatility in every ball that we design. The new Alias takes that to a whole new level. It has been engineered to provide ball motion that's never been possible before. The Alias core design features mass located in specific positions. This allows for maximum performance possibilities. By drilling the Alias, you can achieve a complete symmetric or a high-end asymmetric bowling ball just by adjusting the layout. Imagine the possibilities. Now that we've seen the first look of the all new track alias, I want to get into the engineering features and the drilling layouts and all of the features that make all the impossible thoughts possible with the new track alias. What we did was we created in the concept side, we created a really driller friendly product. In the next couple slides, you're going to see what makes it so driller friendly because we changed the manufactured spec. What we typically put out on bowling ball, we changed all of those manufacturing specs. You're going to see that in the next slide. By doing this, it created the ability to have a full range of ball motion and drilling possibilities because by drilling this bowling ball, like mentioned in the video, you can achieve all different types of ball motions from symmetrical to asymmetrical. It also, backed by popular demand, a lot of pro shops and a lot of consumers really wanted us to focus in on this was to create a bowling ball that has the same core all the way through all the weights, all the way down to 12 pounds. So your 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16 pound bowling balls with the track alias are, are going to have this alias core. By doing that, you ultimately at the end still have a very versatile high performance bowling ball. At the end of the day, you can make all these things possible and have a ball that doesn't roll very good, but that wasn't our goal. Our goal was to create a bowling ball that you can do all these things with and have a completely versatile, high-performance bowling ball that performs phenomenally. So the manufactured ball specs, what did we change? Well, we took the standard specs, which you could see on the screen, and we shrunk them. We basically said, these alias bowling balls need to have different ball specs. In order to do what we're trying to do with layouts and without weight holes, we have to modify the manufacturing side. So we went to the manufacturing team. We said that we want a top weight of only one to three ounces. We also modified the pin distance. Instead of having one to five inch pin distances, which you would see on a regular, any one of our other first quality products, you're gonna see that these now have anywhere from a half inch to only a three and a half inch pin. By changing these and modifying the manufacturing specs, we can create all different layout possibilities. You're gonna see that with Matt and Jackie Carbonetto in the next couple slides. The Alias has a manufactured RG of 2.49, a differential of 054, and a mass bias of 013. The most important thing you're going to see on this screen to focus on is what the mass bias number is. It starts at 13, so keep that in the back of your mind. When you start drilling a bowling ball, what does that number go to? And we're going to tell you that it's going to change a lot just by seeing the three different layouts for Matt and Jackie. The first bowler is going to be Matt Gasson. He's a high rev rate player and a high ball speed player. He really rolls the ball as well. So if you relate to him, watch his ball motion and see how his ball motion rolls. If you're not a high rev rate player or a high ball speed player and you really maybe get around the ball a little bit more, you might relate to somebody like Jackie Carbonetto. You're going to see her in the next couple slides as well. You're going to see both bowlers, so if you relate to one or another, you can really see how that ball motion compares to your game as well. <clears throat> The first layout, again, we, we put three different layouts on Matt Gasson's alias. We took it and we drilled a high mass bias, a medium mass bias, and a symmetrical no mass bias property product. Well, by doing that, the first layout here is the high mass bias. By doing that, we put the thumb hole right in the center of the mass bias. If you go back and watch our Cores 101 video, you can really see what this does to a core. You can see how the RG contours change. You can see how the intermediate, or also known as the mass bias, 
how that number changes as well. And so for this, for Matt Gaston, we drilled his alias, we put the thumb right on the mass bias, we were able to get his intermediate differential all the way up to 027. Remember, it started at 13, but now we've basically doubled the strength of the core. So you're going to see that in his ball motion. But the one thing, the most important thing that you should look at on this screen is really the ball specs. And what does that mean? Right in the center of the screen, it says ball specs, top weight any and pin distance any. For this layout, which you've got the pin above the fingers and the mass bias right in the thumb, any one of our first quality products of the alias, you can drill this layout on and not need a weight hole because it will be statically balanced by USB-C compliant rules. That says that you have to have less than one ounce of finger and one ounce of side weight. Well, again, because of any one of our ball specs that we changed in our manufacturing process, you could drill this layout and not have to have a weight hole. Obviously, I'd want to weigh it up just to make sure everything's good before your bowlers go to nationals, um, bowl any type of league or USB-C certified competition. Definitely weigh it up before it leaves the pro shop. But for instance, with this, the statically balanced product with this specific weight layout. As this bowling ball is going in the lane, keep in mind this is the high mass bias property. So what, what does that mean for ball motion? Well, I oftentimes like to think of it as a bottle, or in this case, a remote sitting on a flat surface. As I start to turn this remote off to its side, gravity is eventually going to take over and cause it to abruptly fall and completely, what in our bowling sense, roll out. So what happens with this bowling ball with the high mass bias property? Well, it gets to that spot, and as gravity's pulling it down, it wants to really change direction. Well, you're going to see that with this product. Right at about 45 feet down the lane, you're going to see that bowling ball make that hockey stick shape. It's going to get to a spot and change direction. With all of our cover stock technology and all of our surface technology, this ball doesn't roll out either. It continues through the pins. You can see that it almost mows over the eight pin. I mean, it just rolls right over it. So what happens is that core has such a high mass bias, it's getting to the spot, and it's really abruptly changing direction. So keep that in mind when you're drilling products for bowlers. The second layout we did was the medium mass bias. So what we did was we took his thumb, and we put it directly in between the two knobs. You saw that the, the protrusion on, on the side and the mass bias area, we put the thumb hole right in the middle of that. Using Blueprint software, you could see that we barely touched into the core. Ultimately, we really didn't affect the numbers a whole lot. You could saw that, that that mass bias went from 013 to now we drilled it for Matt, it's at 015. It's not that very big of a difference. Specifically, you've taken three big holes and you put them in the, the side of a bowling ball. But focused again on that ball spec page right there, that, that part of the screen that shows you what the ball specs can be, anywhere from two ounces of less of top weight and two and a half inch pin distance or less, you can choose this layout and you don't need to worry about a weight hole because it's going to be USB-C statically balanced. It's going to be compliant to that one ounce of finger and one ounce side weight rule. So again, we were able to modify in the manufacturing process and to create balls that have these ball specs for you to be able to drill layouts like this. <clears throat> As we see the bowling ball going down the lane, you could see that before where the big change of direction because it was such a high mass bias, well, that's still going to be there because it is still asymmetrical, but it's going to be a little less. It's not going to be such a, an abrupt change. It's going to get a little bit of smoother ball motion down lane. So you can see at about 45 feet, it doesn't do the complete change of direction. It's actually just more of a smoother change of direction than you saw before. Still continues well. If you look at it going through the pins, what we look at when we're testing a product is how the bowling ball interacts with the pins. What is the deflection of the bowling ball? This ball has no deflection. It has complete continuation and complete drive through the pins. So again, what makes this ball so versatile and so effective on the lanes? The third layout for Matt Gaston, we chose a low mass bias or ultimately a symmetrical layout. How did we achieve that? Well, we took that thumb hole and we put it directly in the side of the core. So you can see the mass bias is 90 degrees to the thumb. That rod is the mass bias rod. We drilled directly into the side of the core, into that nub, and basically we took the asymmetry and we removed it and made it completely symmetrical bowling ball. You can see that by the RG contours. Those RG contours are completely symmetrical and no longer focused around the thumb or the mass bias area, making it a symmetrical bowling ball going down the lane at 001 of the intermediate. It's really important to know that we were able to achieve this bowling ball because we followed a ball spec of one and a half ounces of top weight or less, or a pin distance of two and a half inches or less. 
let's say you, you have a bowling ball in your pro shop and you've got it and it might have three ounces of top weight in a half inch pin. You can still do this layout, but you might need a weight hole on that aspect. But with these ball specs, if you're using one and a half ounces of less top weight or two inch pin or less, you're not going to need a weight hole. By modifying in such a way, we recommend that if you want to do this layout, choose these ball specs or get really close to it, as close as you can to it. By doing that, you can see that the static weight is completely legal. If you take a ball that has three ounces of top weight instead of one and a half ounces, think about what you're doing to the ball. That CG placement, which is blue on the screen there, compared to the center of grip, the CG is the center of gravity and the center of your grip, the further away it gets, let's say that's three ounces. Well, that three ounces added an ounce and a half to either the finger or the side, which wouldn't make it completely compliant to USB-C rules. So it's important to focus on those lower top weights and lower pin distances when you're trying to do something like a symmetrical layout. As we watch Matt throw this bowling ball down the lane, again, think about what we were talking about with the bottle tipping over. Well, the core's doing the same thing. What, what happens now, though, there's no asymmetry. Think of it almost instead of tipping over a bottle, let's say you're tipping over a tennis ball. And you're taking that tennis ball and you're tipping it over. Well, gravity's not going to keep pulling it because it's now around. It's completely symmetrical. Same thing happens with the ball motion. Instead of the ball sitting there standing up at any point, that core is just going to constantly continue all the way through the pins. That's what makes this ball and this layout so unique. You can actually create a complete arc of a ball motion. It's not a hockey stick. It starts up and it's just a completely smooth continuation. So let's look at the three different layouts. We have the high mass bias on the left, we have the medium mass bias in the middle, and we have the symmetrical mass bias. Here you can compare the numbers. These are the same bowling ball. We've taken a, three aliases, same cover stock, same finish, same core. We just changed the layout to accommodate either a high intermediate, a medium intermediate, or a no intermediate or symmetrical layout. So by taking these three bowling balls, we were able to completely have very similar ball motions, but we were able to get completely different ball motions with just by changing the layout, which is really cool. That's what makes all the possibilities happen with, with this alias here. You can see the RG contours. You can see it goes from high end asymmetrical all the way to the completely symmetrical bands on the symmetrical side here. Now you're going to see the three ball motions going down the lane. You're going to see that Matt is the furthest left with the high mass bias product because it is ultimately the strongest. It wants to stand up the hardest. It wants to move the most because it's asymmetrical. Now he's the furthest right with the low symmetrical. You're going to see that he doesn't lose any of the continuation through the pins. You're going to see that in the next slide here with the specto data. Every single one of his bowling balls splits the 8-9. That's great continuation. We didn't lose continuation. It's just a matter of how he got there. Well, by changing the layout, he can have three completely unique ball motions in his bag and not have to worry about transitioning with different cover stocks or different cores. He can have confidence in that product as the lanes begin to transition or begin to burn up. The next bowler we're going to show you is Jackie Carbonetto. Again, if you, if you saw Matt and you relate to the high rev player, the high ball speed player, Jackie's not the one to look at for ball motion. But if you are a low ball speed or a low rev rate player, Jackie's going to be the one that relates most to you. So you're going to see that Jackie's rev rate is 226 RPMs, and she has a ball speed of just under 15 miles an hour. We put those same three layouts that you saw on Matt Gass, and we put those same three layouts on aliases for Jackie. You're going to see that the thumb right in the center of the mass bias on the, this first layout here is the strongest layout. Again, it's the high mass bias layout. Her intermediate goes to 024. We well, saw that Matt's went to 027. Well, why did Jackie's go to 024? It's because her thumb size. Well, Matt has a bigger thumb, so he's taking and affecting the core a lot more. Jackie has a smaller thumb, so she's not affecting or taking out as much mass out of that core. So she's going to affect it differently. That's the power of having Blueprint to be able to see what you're truly doing to the bowling ball with each of the bowler specs. So again, with the high mass bias layout, you could do any of our first quality ball specs. So if you're going to open up a box and you're going to see what the ball specs are on the side of the box, any of those ball specs are going to work perfectly with this layout, pin above the finger, thumb, and the mass bias. We're going to watch her throw the bowling ball down the lane here. And again, you're going to see a big change of direction down lane. She has a lower ball speed, lower rev rate, so it's not as drastic as you're going to see with what Matt had, but it's the same ball motion. It's the same physics. Gravity doesn't change for her versus Matt. It's just how much energy is applied to the bowling ball. And so ultimately, we're having that same ball motion shape, 
But with a player like Jackie, a lot of times she runs into the bowling balls all really look similar when they're going down the lane. Let's say it, you're taking one bowling ball versus the next, different covers, different cores, different finishes. With her ball speed and rev rate, a lot of times she matches up with one ball motion. Well, with the alias, because it is such a complete unique core difference and same cover stock, same finish, we were able to almost get 10 boards of difference on the front part of the lane, which is incredible for a player like Jackie to be able to go to a tournament and have all three different styles of play. So we're going to show you the next layout here, which is the medium mass bias. Again, same thing we did for Matt. We kicked that mass bias out to the right, and we kept her thumb right in between the two knobs. Her intermediate went to 14, which is manufactured at 13, so we're not modifying the core very much. We're going to show her throwing down the lane. She is moving slightly to the right, and she's going to have a little bit smoother of a ball motion off the break point. She doesn't lose continuation. The ball still splits the 8-9, but it's just a different type of ball motion because we've changed the layout. The third layout, like we did for Matt, is the symmetrical layout. We put her thumb hole, we put it right on the top of that knob there. We put the mass bias 90 degrees to the thumb, and we're able to get the intermediate all the way down to 001, making it a completely symmetrical bowling ball going down the lane. And because we use those ball specs that are so important, we kept the one and a half ounces of top weight or less and the three inch pin or less. We were able to drill this bowling ball, even though the CGs float way far away from the center of grip, we were able to keep the static weight less than an ounce in the finger and less than an ounce inside. And again, that was only made possible. You can only do this because we changed the manufacturing specs and we were able to create ball specs that are lower than you would typically see with a standard bowling ball. As you watch her pull the, the symmetrical bowling ball down the lane, she's the straightest with it and she's really, really smooth. The ball motion is just continuous. She never once loses continuation. It's just a matter of how the ball gets to the pins. And that's what makes the biggest difference when you're drilling three different layouts for the alias, why it makes it so important to have all three in your bag. I can't wait for nationals to come up because I think what I'm going to do this year is probably take all three of these different layouts because I know I can transition into each one of them without going into a completely different zone, without completely different ball motions, just by maintaining and controlling what the strength of the core is doing. You can see that the high mass bias layout here, thumb in the mass bias, she got it up to 024 in the intermediate. The medium mass bias is at 014 with the thumb right in between the two knobs. And then the symmetrical layout with the thumb right into the side of the knob there at 001. You see the RG contours and how we manipulated it. these. And with the ball specs that we talked about, all three of these are completely USB-C compliant without a weight hole. So that's really important to think on what you're doing with a bowling ball without modifying the core unnecessarily. We're going to see all three of these go down the lane. And again, like I said, Jackie has a hard time separating from one ball to the next because her style of play. And a lot of players in this area may see that same thing happen. You might see that the bowling ball from bowling ball A versus bowling ball B might roll the same, even though they're completely different. Well, with Jackie, we were able to manip manipulate the core by changing the layout. We were able to get over 10 boards of laydown area, of difference. Yeah, they all go through the pins and they all continue great, but it's how she got to the pocket that matters. Here's the spectrum information here. And again, all the pins, all the balls going through the pins phenomenally. Talking about the alias one last time before I get out of here is that it is a hybrid. Look at the cover stock is prime hybrid. It has got a box finish of 500, 2000. That's the recommended box finish, but that doesn't mean that you have to keep it that way. If you've got to get a ball that picks up a little bit earlier, maybe go 5-1, it's still a phenomenal product. Say it starts up a little bit early and you want to do 500, 3,000 grit, it's perfect. It's still a phenomenal product. Um, again, all of the RGs and differentials all the way down, all the way down to 12 pounds. So it's really cool. You got a player that comes in at those 13 pounds and has never had an HP core, a high performance core, you can drill that with the alias. Anything is possible with this product. That's what makes it so unique. Imagine the possibilities.